night we're going to begin our, our prayer time in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. We're going to ask that all believers would grow. It, I, I just read the wrong thing, didn't I? I sure did. That's a good one, too, though. We're going we're gonna to actually be praying on verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So we're going to pray that all believers would grow in their vigilance, Amen. which has very much to do with um, how Brother Matt opened us up this evening. Amen. You're never going to find a time when you're too vigilant. You're never going to look back and say, boy, I could have relaxed. I shouldn't have put so much effort in, in being vigilant. It was a waste. It, we, we are in a, a place of, of great jeopardy. I was thinking, as Brother Matt was uh, speaking earlier, how that whenever a person is aware that, they're, that their surroundings are dangerous or their their own, their own selves, that there, there's some kind of a threat. They just, you, you don't have to tell them, now stay awake, keep your eyes open, watch for this or watch for that. Whatever it is that they're aware of, they're watchful for. So if a person is not vigilant whenever it comes to the things of the faith, it's because they've allowed themselves to get in a condition where they're just not aware of the dangers that are always imminent to the believer. It, it's just not a matter of physical harm. It has to do with, with being ready for perhaps a sudden temptation that's thrown at you. Perhaps the evil day is about to befall you, and it doesn't always give you a warning. Uh, in fact, very frequently, whenever the evil day comes, it is without any warning at all. You have to be prepared for something that isn't, isn't anticipated, except for that you know that as long as we're here that, that there's the possibility of that. You have to be vigilant for sudden blessings so that you can handle them rightly, so that you don't allow for opportunities to pass you by. Uh, uh, no matter what it is, everything about our lives here, we must be vigilant for because it isn't easily apparent to us and because we have a part of us that by nature is comfortable in the earth. We have to be vigilant against that also, that we don't allow ourselves to slip into something that is comfortable to our flesh and yet very deadly to our spiritual lives. So, and of course, always watching and waiting for the return of our Lord. He, this... Uh, I know we've, we've often spoken in, in the way that scripture reads it indicates that there will be uh, a period of time when men are allowed to become aware of what's upon them but it doesn't suggest that at that time they're going to have presence of mind to do anything about it so we have to be ready should that sign suddenly appear even before we finish our service tonight that we, we've been vigilant and that we've been careful to mind the things that uh, are necessary to life and godliness and to take hold of all the things that are provided for us in Christ Jesus and not to allow ourselves to stray in our thinking or our affection or, or anything else about ourselves. So that if that moment comes upon us, I think about Brother Jeremy, whenever they thought that they were, they were spending their last seconds on earth that his thought was, I'm ready. So that if that day comes upon us or any other day, we can meet it with rejoicing, knowing that we've been made ready and that we've been watching for this day. We want to be on that number of then saying, this is our God. We Amen. have waited for him. Amen. Well, waiting is vigilance in a, in a very profitable sense. So who will lead us in that request that all believers would grow in their vigilance? Brother Jeremy, thank you. Sister Laura, yeah, uh, coming together and availing ourselves of the things that are going to be delivered to us this night is part of that vigilance. 
Now we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 13. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Paul just got through speaking to the brethren there about uh, his, his mouth being open to them and his heart being enlarged. And for them not to be straight, see it's one thing for the speaker to have an open mouth and a heart that's enlarged, but you have to have that, I have to have that as we're listening in order to really receive everything that's being offered. <coughs> He, he spoke to them about being straightened in themselves. He, what he was delivering from the Lord was, was good for them. It was, it was something that, that was necessary and they could grow with it. Very nourishing, as it were. But they were straightened in themselves. It's like you've got this sound going out and you've got your fingers in your ear or something where you're not listening. So we're praying that all saints everywhere would be enlarged, that whether for, whether for performing the ministry that God has given them or whether receiving the ministry that that was put in the body for. At any one given time, there are a lot of ministries going on. Sometimes there are a lot of people exercising the same ministry. Other times there's just one person that's exercising a particular ministry in the body. But whatever it is, either for giving or for receiving, we need to be enlarged so that Christ is made known and the body is functioning properly and that uh, we ourselves are receiving all of the benefit that, that God through Christ and by his spirit is ministering to his people because he is ministering. That's not the question. The question is never is Christ working? Is he ministering? The question is, are we able to receive? So who lead us in that request? That all saints everywhere would be enlarged. Sister Barb. Sister Laura. All right. Finally, we're going to remain here in 2 Corinthians in the 6th chapter and read verse 17. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Our prayer is that all saints would be persuaded of the reality and necessity of being separate. It seems like the more immature a person is, the harder this is for them to see. But that doesn't mean that uh, once, once a person has attained to a certain level of maturity that it's no longer necessary. Because we are surrounded, I mean encapsulated, if you will, in our present existence in a world that is contrary to this. The, the defilement is all around us. You, you don't even have to walk out of your house to be bothered with it. You don't even have to, to, well, you take it, you take it when you go to sleep and you rise up with it in the morning. What can I say? You have a body that by nature uh, has a, a capacity to, to be defiling, even in the things that, that it desires, the way that the, your thoughts, not necessarily thoughts that are intrinsically evil, it's just they're competitive. That's what makes them wrong in defiling. They're just competitive. Everything has to be brought into subjection to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. And so it's a constant thing here. We're asking that the saints would be persuaded of the reality and necessity of being separate. It's one thing. It's, it's kind of like having gloves on. Some things you do, you don't want to touch with your hands, but you've got to do them. So you put gloves on. It insulates you a little bit from what it is that you're having to handle. Well, in a, in a sense, it's like being, you're, you have to do what you have to do, but it, the, it, it doesn't have the ability to communicate the defilement to you. There's a protection there. There's a, there's a, a barrier, if you will. And it, you don't see it, but you know it because 
your heart is not affected. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't able to, to really affect you in your heart. Your heart remains separate from it, even though you're performing the necessary tasks. So there's a protection there. Being separate will cause you to physically separate from some things. There are things that's not necessary for us to have to do. And, and a pure heart, one that's separate from the world, will automatically prefer to be separate from the things that it can be physically separate from. That'll be its inclination. But it's because of that other separation, that separation of affection, not, not imbibing the world, not being a real partaker of the spirit of the world, but rather having your heart and your mind pure unto the Lord. If something is clean, you ever notice that it, it has a tendency to want to not get around the dirt? Uh, if, but if something's not clean, it's like, no big deal, I'm already dirty, dive in. Uh -huh. So we want to be, just like those, those clean animals, we want to be clean so that it bothers us, so that the dirt, the filth of the world bothers us, so that we agree, we have that agreement with God in what he prefers and loves and and would be joined to in the things that he hates and refuses and will not be joined to to protect that fellowship we have with him because Jesus was associated with sin once never again so don't think for a moment that he'll be associated with sin for you again or me again not as far as being joined to it being a partaker of it we have to stay clean as he is clean. So who would like to uh, raise that prayer for all the saints? And I, there are people, when we say all the saints and we pray these things, there are people who don't even know they're being prayed for that need these things too. We need them, but we're praying these also for the glory of God and for the building up and the perfecting of the body of Christ that is still sojourning in this earth. Amen. These are things necessary for all that would live in Christ Jesus. So as we pray these things, uh, remember that also, that this is for our Lord. This is for His glory. And this, even if we don't see them here, you know, if the body is built up and strengthened, we shall all have some benefit somehow because we're connected. So, who will lead us that all saints would be persuaded, absolutely persuaded, know it, operate according to that principle, not set it aside, always have it in their thinking of the reality and the necessity of being separate. Brother Robert. Sister Laura. All right. Following our prayer, Sister Sydney is going to come up and read the sermon text for Brother Jeremy.